Hey everyone, Complex back with another video and today, today we're going to start chatting about everything we learned at TennoCon during the main stage presentation and I say start because we're going to have to do this in a few different videos between the new war and Railjack and there was that whole like uh, new player start video. Uh, there is just, there's a lot there. <laughs> And there's a lot of questions I have as far as lore goes, um, especially with the new war. That, that trailer left me with oodles and oodles of questions, which is fantastic. And I really feel like it, since the sacrifice quest, even before that with like War Within, uh, Chains of Harrow, stuff like that, like we're starting to get really tight on the lore. It's really starting to go in a direction, whereas before it felt like we were getting snippets of something that could be phenomenal. Like, for instance, Rhino Prime's... Um, Codex entry has a lot of information in it, a lot of interesting information, and and now I feel like that information has a purpose, um, and so I, it makes me really excited. I love lore. Uh, if you guys have hung out with me on stream for any amount of time, you've probably heard how much I love lore in video games. Uh, one of the reasons I love like Dragon Age, Mass Effect, stuff like that, uh, The Witcher Three. It's just lore. I love lore. Um, and I feel like Warframe's starting to hit this point now where we're not only getting fantastic combat, fantastic um, customization and all that other stuff, but we're also now starting to get fantastic stories and lore. And I am so, so excited to see where this goes in the end. Also, quick spoiler warning, um, depending on where you are in Warframe, I could mention things that are kind of spoilery in here. So as a heads up, potential spoilers ahead. One of the things though that interested me the most in the New War trailer was the fact that it was, they landed on the planes, men. Now, what's interesting about that is if you've done the scans for the Thousand Year Fish um, and all this other stuff, you've seen the, probably seen the Codex entries that talk about uh, the Eidolon, that talk about Unum and, and Cetus as a whole. And also through Garrus' quest, we learn a little bit more about the history of Cetus. There was a gigantic sentient war fought on the plains. The, what you see when you're on the plains is actually remnants of that war. You're seeing dead sentients, like dead gigantic sentients. And then on the, the trailer, you see this gigantic sentient. So the question is, are they restarting that war from this point? Are they trying to resurrect uh, the Eidolons? Like, there are so many lore implications. So one of the reasons why I mention, are they trying to resurrect the Eidolons is because of the codex entry for it. Now, the codex entry reads, Rising from the lakes at sundown and returning to them before dawn, these simple-minded monstrosities roam the night plains, howling, searching for a thing they can barely remember, completeness, wholeness, and intelligence and malevolent purpose, which fate-willing they will never return to again. And it's that fate-willing part that that really is telling. They will, like, fate-willing they will never return to again. Implying that they could theoretically come back they could find that wholeness that completeness they could become the monsters of old the the sentience of old so did we see that trailer at the end in cetus with those big monsters or the big sentience if you will because they're going back now the other interesting thing is the reason the sentience were so uh, hell bent on getting to what is now like modern day sea, just kind of thing. And you can see that in the Plains of Eidolon Codex entry. The site of the final battle between Unum's champion, Gera, and the colossal sentient that wished to claim the tower's regenerative qualities for itself. Today, the remains of the sentient, diminished and confused, wander the plains, seeking a cohesion the Austrians hope it shall never find. So we know through this that the only reason they were really there in part was because of this tower and we know that the tower itself houses what is the i'm going to call the consciousness of unum and we're going to do a different video on unum in the future because there's just so much there and a few different implications that i'd i'd like to chat about separately but the real question then boils down to i guess as far as the sentience landing on the planes in this trailer are they there to resurrect eidolons or are they there for the regenerative properties of this tower 
or both. And the other thing is, at the end of the trailer, I don't know if you guys noticed that big sentient that they showed, it looked an awful lot like an Eidolon. What I would imagine an Eidolon who wasn't basically the undead would look like. So... Does that mean they have more of them? That they've rebuilt them? Was that the other, like the sentient faction, have they like basically taken the Eidolon zombies out of the planes and then restored them on their own? Ah, there's so many interesting implications as far as just those big sentient monsters go. And the other thing that I found to be incredibly interesting was at the start of the trailer, uh, you can kind of hear this crackling people talking over comms. And one of the things that was said was Mercury's gone dark. All Ostrom flee Mars immediately. They're taking the entire system. So this implies that this is an all-out war. It's interesting, too, that it said Ostrom flee Mars. Now, we do know that theoretically... Um, the Ostrom have like kind of these floating markets throughout the system. So, so that would make sense that they're warning the Ostrom, but once again, it comes back to the Ostrom. It comes back to the Plains of Eidolon. It comes back to Cetus. And I find that very, very interesting. And I hope that that gets expanded on because it's with that big sentient battle that was fought, all those orc and towers that were lost and Cetus being the last man standing in that area, I'd love to find out if there's something more. If if that area means even more than what we think. And is there a reason why DE started their open world zone with the Plains of Eidolon? Is there a reason that this is kind of ground zero for all of it? And then it's just gonna, what, keep expanding into the entirety of the solar system? That's cool. That's freaking cool. And I do have to wonder, how is it going to expand into the system? Are we talking like we'll see planet by planet fall? Is it gonna be up to us? Is it not just like individually within the story, but up to us um, as a community to to stop it from hitting certain points is this going to be an ongoing war is this just going to kind of be one quest they did mention that they are adding brand new tile set if you watched the um the art panel at tanocon they did show and they also showed on the main stage presentation some of what's to come as far as the new tile sets go with the sentient as a new basically a new faction in their own right so Oh, what what are they going to do with that? How is that going to be worked in? Is it going to kind of be like the Kuva Fortress where it'll be like its own place we can go? Is it going to be something where like sentience will be able to take over parts of planets or nodes or something like that? And then we'll be able to fight them there. And then once we hit a certain point, um, you know, like, like a ghoul purge or something like that, like we have to purge the sentience from this place. And then once we do, we can get it back to normal. And then through that, are we going to start finding allies in really strange places? And by strange places, I mean the Corpus and the Grenier. The, the three of us don't get along very well. I The Tenno, Grenier, and Corpus rarely, if ever, see eye to eye on things. I mean, the closest we've ever gotten to seeing eye to eye with Grenier is through Steel Meridian, theoretically. And, and, and Clem, of course, because because Clem, that's why. <laughs> um, but then additionally, are we going to have allies within the Kuva Fortress, because that's, that's a story that's been told, but there's still bits and bobs left on the table, depending on your choices in the, the war within, depends on what happened to the Kuva Queens. Um, it, so there's at least one still rocking around. There's potentially a second. So does that mean we could potentially find allies in them, or are they going to find allies within the sentience, or are they just not even... Are they still going to be kind of floating around in their fortress like la-di-da, who cares, kind of thing? So many different people, uh, factions, and all this other stuff that could come into play at this point. And I do think the most important person that's going to come into play in this quest is Nata. Uh, Steve from DE at one point during the main stage presentation had... Uh, said something interesting, and uh, to, to sum it up kind of thing, it was... For Nata, this quest is going to come down to what's more important. The family you make or the family that you're born into. Implying choice. More choice. And as we know from like the War Within and all the other main story quests, you kind of get to pick and choose certain options. And now you kind of have like that, that little tone 
uh, you, like your alignment. That's a better word for it, your alignment. Uh, and, and is that going to play into the ending of the new war? Is that going to play into to Nata's fate? Are you going to get to decide Nata's fate or are your actions going to decide Nata's fate? And there's a difference there. Your actions imply everything that you've done or everything that you do in this quest will ultimately lead to this ending or are you deciding yay or nay you know what I mean like there so there is that difference and I'm very curious to see where this kind of goes and then lastly we have the chimera prologue that was the most recent addition uh to the quest line and with Ballas in the state that he's in and the information that you got from that I am I'm curious to see if we're actually going to see some something from Ballas in this quest or uh, is Ballas gone? And I will say the reward that you got uh, for the end of the Chimera Prologue, that reward makes so much more sense now. And if you haven't built it yet, I would probably build it. I myself am now going to uh, to get on that because I think it's going to be pretty helpful in the end. It, you know, it could help just a bit. Y'all, seriously though, thank you so much for hanging out with me while we uh, kind of deep dived a little bit into uh, the new war trailer and uh, some of the implications uh, behind it, some of the, the lore speculations and stuff like that. Um, they did say on the main stage presentation at TennoCon that they are hoping for a holiday 2019 release. So hopefully we will see uh, the new war sometime around then. In the meantime, though, expect to see some more Warframe lore videos on the channel. I'm going to start deep diving into a variety of topics uh, to kind of get us all prepped and ready to go. Uh, before, though, we start deep, deep diving into lore, I am going to do a brief um, video similar to this on Railjack and then a small baby one on the uh, the new Tenno uh experience uh, video that came out which I am just in love with but I'd love to hear your thoughts on it all how are you feeling about the new war about the trailer is there something I missed in the trailer uh, that you wanted to chat about if so leave it down in the comments down below or I do twitch warframe a few times a week the link for twitch is in the description of the video also flashing across your screen come uh, come hang out feel free we'd love to have you come say hi or just chat about lore you know how we do y'all though seriously thank you so so much for hanging out with me today i hope you all have a fantastic rest of your night and or day depending on where you are in the world and i will catch you next time goodbye guys